Here we go. Yes, it is. Another edition of the DC Sports Huddle sponsored by MGM National Harbor. It's time to change the game at Bet MGM Sports. I'm Dave Johnson, and yes, we've got the full lineup this week, and that's an encouraging sign of these times. George Wallace, Dave Preston, Rob Woodfork, and Chris Chion. And yes, we are dealing with sports in a COVID-19 world, and this does not come as, as a surprise. It's something that all leagues had to deal with last year. Some leagues are forced into postponing games. We're not sure that's going to be the case in the NFL because they have a limited space of time. Uh, they can't suddenly schedule games on Tuesday and Wednesday. Well, they can, but it, it seems unlikely at this point. So that's, we bring in this noting that all teams now are probably going to have to manage uh, COVID down the stretch in one form or another. Washington is coming off the loss to Dallas. Let's go around the horn and just get the general thoughts of where this Washington football team is. It would have been nice to win that game against the Dallas Cowboys, but the season, the postseason hopes, not over. Where do we think this team stands? We'll start with you, George Wallace. Well, uh, right now it's, uh, you know, this, everything is still in front of them. That is the good news as they are, even though despite the loss the other day, they're still in the seventh spot with four division games left. But as you mentioned with the COVID situation, it's going to now, the, the depth is going to be tested for teams around the league and uh, see which GMs and coaches can pull the right put the pull the right triggers and find guys off practice squads which washington's been trying to do this week dealing with the COVID situation so with everything still right in front of them that is the positive now it's just gonna be a matter of who can be on the field starting sunday in philadelphia and then you got the cowboys again followed by the eagles and the giants so there are winnable games things they do still control the direction that they are going to go right now in that seventh spot but things up for grabs in his last four weeks of the season beginning sunday Dave Preston, you're on the clock. George, I'm so glad you didn't say control your own destiny because we know that can't happen. We've already covered that here. I think they do control their path to the playoffs, especially with two games against Philadelphia coming out, perhaps their primary uh, competition for this sixth or seventh spot in the wild card uh, in, in the playoffs. Uh, what we saw was you can't spot uh, the division leader 24 points in the first half at home. They'll move on from this. They didn't play their best, but after four weeks of Back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back great efforts. You're due for a clinker like this. As we mentioned, they've got the Eagles twice. They've got the Giants. Those are very winnable games. The Cowboys game could even be winnable, depending on what happens between now and then. Good point. Rob Woodford? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, uh, the, yeah, the, the, the same thing uh, these guys have been yeah. saying. I mean, it's it, you really just have to just play what's in front of you. I mean, the Eagles game uh, right now, this is important because they are also 6-7, and seven, and they are in the mix. Uh, for a wild card. In fact, there's like five or six teams. There's a glut of teams right there in the mix for that, uh, those last two wild card spots. So, um, you know, I, I, I said this before, I think they only have maybe one more loss in them with a realistic shot at making the playoffs. If they lose any more than one, then they're going to be home for the holidays. Well, the, the scramble for a wild card spot is what the late great Pete Rosell wanted and why the NFL is on any given Sunday and why it all comes down uh, to the last few weeks. It makes for great ratings, they tell me in television. Chris Gian? Yeah, I can't feel very encouraged watching the worst first half or half by any means in the Ron Rivera era. Um, that, you know, they had what, net 29 yards through two quarters against Dallas, who absolutely just were manhandling them in the trenches. And I think that's going to happen again with Philadelphia. I mean, they're tied for the most offensive line combinations in the NFL, the uncertainty at quarterback now, Terry McLaurin, Logan Thomas, Antonio Gibson's fumbling, and then you've got all the defensive woes. I would say the linebacking core with Cole Holcomb and getting that pick six and Jamin Davis playing better is the bright spot of that defense. Kind of can't believe I'm saying that. But, yeah, situation not looking very good for Washington, in my opinion, as they head during this uh, this tough stretch. Eagles twice, Dallas again, and the Giants. And we're not used to saying this about the Eagles, but they are one of the best teams in the league at running the ball. And here's a stat for you. Uh, Washington mm -hmm. gives up only three and a half yards per carry to running backs, so they can stop running backs. But quarterbacks are giving up almost six yards a carry. So this is what – oh, by the way, they're playing a really – quarterback in Jalen Hurts so uh containing him is going to be uh is going to be the key to this game if they can't keep him in the pocket where he does make some mistakes um th uh, th this isn't going to be pretty for them in my general statement the the loss to the Dallas was a sobering 
measuring stick that the Washington football team got smacked across the face in. But I will also say this, uh, they've been down this road before. I think uh, right around the bye week, we had them done at that point. So this is where faith and belief in head coach uh, Ron Rivera comes in. He seems to be able to guide this team through a lot of bumpy roads, a road that's getting bumpier now uh, because of uh, COVID issues uh, uh, rising up throughout the NFL, including Washington. So I do believe that any coach is going to help navigate a team through this uh, incredibly difficult period. Ron Rivera has shown he certainly has the chops to do that. Uh, Rob just gave a hint on the matchup. Uh, George, your thoughts on the Eagles Washington football team, what it's going to take on the field, no, no matter who's on the field. Yeah. And to Rob's point about containing Jalen Hurts right now with Tim Settle, uh, Jonathan Allen, uh, Montez Sweat, uh, Deron Payne, like those guys are not Deron Payne, but everybody uh, settled added today to the list. I mean, Shaka Tony is going to be starting, you know, defensive end. I mean, you got guys that are going to be off the streets and practice squads starting on Sunday, possibly if these guys don't clear uh, to face a pretty good uh, Eagles offense that can run the ball, like you said, in Jalen Hurts uh, situation. So, and on the back end of the, the defense with Kendall Fuller added to the uh, COVID list. So basically the defense right now is a big issue, a big problem uh, for Washington as far as who's going to be able to be on the field. Um, Sunday. And let's not forget also Taylor Heineke's dealing with a knee injury. Kyle Allen was also added to the COVID list. He could be cleared if he tests negative twice in 24 hours, just like these guys that are vaccinated, they could be cleared. But, you know, Kendall Fuller is not vaccinated. Montez Sweat is not vaccinated. So that's a minimum 10 days out for those guys. So uh, the situation's in flux um, Sunday, and you're going on the road to face an Eagles team fighting for its life as well. I think it's going to be a tough, a tough road ahead for Washington, especially this week. Look, Kyle Schumer could be end up playing quarterback Sunday. Let that sink in for a second. Welcome to the NFL now as we go into <laughs> December of 2021. Although it's better than a practice squad receiver like Denver had to do last year. Yeah. So. That's true. That's, true. <laughs> That's the silver hey, for, lining. For those, for those of us who have covered Maryland in the years, they once had a scout team linebacker starting right. quarterback in a Big Ten game. So oh, I remember that. Oh, I remember yeah. that. That was What so concerns bad. me uh, is we're talking a little bit about the offense. Terry McLaurin in the concussion protocol, if he cannot go Sunday, you look at the sure. weapons that whoever is quarterback, whether it's Heineke, whether it's Allen, whether it's Schirmer, whether it's uh, some actor that they were able to get off the street, Keanu Reeves has Keanu Reeves. Mind, I think, at this point in time. There, uh, there are no weapons. There, 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 there will be no weapons. In the, even though and McLaurin has suffered this year by the absence of other weapons around him, with Curtis Samuel being hurt for most of the year, with Logan Thomas miss, missing big stretches, He's on season-ending IR. They announced that he was going to have surgery earlier this week. So if McLaurin can't post on Sunday, oh, my, how are they going to get yards? How are they going to get points? How are they going to move the chains against an Eagles defense that's not great, but 10th in the, you know, 10th in the NFL in total yards given up? Now, Rob, I saw the nod of the head. Does that mean you – it's done. No, no chance in Philadelphia. Oh, well, I'm not saying there's no chance, but I mean, yeah, I mean, at, to Dave's point, I mean, this Eagles defense is not as bad as you think it is for a team that's below 500. They are, uh, they are ranked 10th in yardage. Uh, they're middle of the road in terms of points allowed, but sometimes that can be a little misleading. So um, I, I, I expect it to be a good game. I expect it to be a close game. Washington has been sort of gutting their way to uh to wins and competitive performances this season i don't expect this to be any different even if they are having to sign guys out of the stands to come play uh and we know philadelphia is a place where you can uh you know they they had the jail in the stadium there for all those years so you can pull some guys who can uh, who can really uh go at it in the trenches so uh but if you got to get guys off the street uh, i still think that they're going to be able to coach them up and be able to be competitive in the games but uh I, I in terms of winning this is the third straight game washington is playing a team that has a rest advantage the eagles are coming off a bye they've had two weeks to prepare for this wash i mean ron rivera was saying uh, i guess sunday or monday that the uh you know, having that, that, that this team, the last four games, having to go in short order and going up against teams that have a uh, rest advantage, that was something that ha has adversely affected them. So it, uh, if this catches up to them this week, I mean, it's going to, I mean, obviously it's going to give them uh, no room for error uh, heading down the stretch, but I, I don't think they're going to win this game just because of the rest factor. Yeah. And you mentioned the rest factor, just, Wrapping my head around again, I know it's only one extra game, but a 17 game regular season in some ways now as we're dealing with COVID issues and everything but, else. But on the but on the positive light, 
I said the same thing about them going to Las Vegas, going on a short week, mm-hmm. uh, having just played right. a Monday nighter, and they right. ended up winning that game. So, right. who knows? Flip a coin. <laughs> right. Well, as Dave Preston will tell us, only time zones make a difference. Well, <laughs> the thing is, and both of these are Eastern time zone teams, and they're playing at 1 there o'clock, it is. so we've got that right. going. There's, uh, that. More, There's the clock uh, king right there. Importantly, I think more importantly, gentlemen, is how well they fare on third down. Burgundy and Gold second to last in getting off the field on third down. They've been much better. In the last month or so, Philadelphia fourth best at moving the chains on the money down. So I think we're going to find early uh, Sunday afternoon if uh, if Philadelphia is able to sustain, to sustain some drives, it could be a very long afternoon. Are right, we're going to call him if, third down, Dave. Now, right? That, that's right. That's okay. Right. <laughs> just gave us our key step of the game. More than Chris just Gian, time zones. <laughs> Chris Gian, your 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 uh, assessment of the matchup from your perspective. Well, I the big words I throw in there, but just try to decipher and come up with it. Well, we've got two six and seven teams. And before this week had started, and maybe before this past Sunday, I would have said that they're totally evenly matched here. I would feel worse if Gardner Minshew was under center than rather than Jalen Hurts, because if there is one thing that I think uh, Washington would struggle with, it would be Gardner Minshew throwing the football. You know, Rob mentioned, I think, earlier about Washington's run defense. If these guys like Jonathan Allen and, you know, Deron Payne still, from what I've seen, is not on any sort of list. So that would help defensively stopping the run there. That's what Philadelphia is going to want to do with Hertz and their stable of running backs there with Jalen under center. So, um, you know, Eagles, to bring my betting thing in here, uh, six and two ATS in the past eight against Washington here. But everybody remembers that last game of the season last year, Washington and the Eagles, which delivered the division here. So do the guys on this Eagles team remember that and say, uh, you know, that, that still leaves a bad taste in our mouth. We're getting, you know, we're, we're going out there. We're firing off against, you know, a, a depleted team here. So, yeah, I, I just think with the issues Washington is dealing with depth wise, it's going to be a struggle. So uh, right. like Philadelphia. And also and every- the names that are on their COVID list, right? As of this taping, they have 11 guys on the COVID list. I mean, a lot of them are defensive starters. You're going without your team. Well, we don't, we don't know that they're going to be out. But as of right now, the names on that list, uh, Jonathan Allen, Kendall Fuller, those are starters. And those are guys that are the best at their positions on the team. So um, it, it's not just that they are missing a bunch of guys. It's the guys that they're missing. And oh, by the way, their edge rushers are already out for the season. So, you know, uh, if, if you got to throw uh, practice squad guys out there, uh, that's that's not a great look. All right, quickly, our closing round of, of key stat, our key player to look for. And I know, Christian, you have to get to the worldwide headquarters of Money Money Network for your show, which, which is called what? What is the show called? By the book, Monumental Sports Network, 5 p.m. Eastern time. Monday through Friday. Dave, you have been doing great on the calls with the Wizards, my man. I'll see you around the arena. Peace. All right. No, no, but real quick, the key stat or key player to watch Sunday? In your mind. Oh, how about this one? Key player, Jared Patterson, Antonio Gibson, Mm. less of a workload after the fumble this past week. And Patterson could be in line for some more work here. He's got a tough matchup ahead with those guys on the Eagles front, Fletcher Cox um to be specific but uh you know we'll see how it goes i think he might be able to uh get some nice carry here if washington's gonna do it control the clock with jared patterson all right chris drive safely george wallace key stat or key player to watch for sunday or listen for i'm gonna go with uh you know i'm gonna stay on the offense as well i mean because here's the other thing he talks about jared patterson we still don't know about jd mckissick guys we haven't even mentioned mckissick he's still coming back from the concussion not to just throw you know more water on our parade here our party here but (laughs) Uh, you know, look, I'm going to go, he's going to be a weird thing. I'm going to, cause Terry McLaurin, not, not uh, as questionable as well. I'm going to go with Curtis Samuel. He's actually been playing the last few weeks. He is a threat out there and he's going to be relied on even more, especially with McLaurin not. So I'm going to look for Samuel to maybe stretch the defense a little bit. Somebody's got to throw it to him. We don't know who that's going to be, but I'm going to go with Samuel perhaps on Sunday. All right, Dave, and your key was third downs, right? Third Any down, other? I think. Uh, yeah, the, the reason why they started two and six was they couldn't get off the field. I think the reason why they won four straight was that they were able to do so. Uh, Dallas, it, it was not as much of a factor this past Sunday, but I think uh, Philly's made its living being able to extend drives, and they've got the number one running game in the NFL at this point in time. So stopping them on third down, stopping the run, because uh, the Burgundy Gold can stop the run this season. It's a one for 
key player, key stat. I'm uh, I'm calling out Landon Collins, y'all, because he, he makes a lot of money, <laughs> and so that uh, he's been you know, playing that, well. He's yeah, he has well. been playing well. Had the interception against Dallas, but Zach. they they needed they need him to be an impact player in this game, especially if you're missing multiple starters. So if Landon Collins has another big game, you know, an interception, a forced fumble. You know, um, I'll even go a step further. Y'all need to get a touchdown because we don't know how the offense is going to perform. So I, I'm, I'm going to say Landon Collins stepping up. That could be the difference maker. And we decided to what to call Landon Collins. Is he a safe back or is he defensive back in the box? Is there some cute either name? whatever it is? He doesn't like his new position. Volleyball, like I think it's called libero, where they're not rotating. I, I wish he would embrace that more, by the way, because he's so much better at that than just being a safety. Yeah. Hmm. So, I mean, you would think the thing that keeps you on the field more and makes you more of a factor in games would be the thing that you would want to do. So I don't I don't totally understand his uh, his reluctance to embrace that. And my key uh, stat is is turnovers. Dovetailing what Rob said, the defense needs to help the offense score. And so Washington needs to win the turnover battle and also time of possession. Another T uh, that's going to be critical as well. So. If not, it could be a long afternoon for the Washington football team. That's going to do it. We appreciate everybody listening and watching the DC Sports Huddle, sponsored by MGM National Harbor. It's time to change the game at Bet MGM Sports. For Chris Chion, who's already betting on something, Dave Preston, <laughs> Rob Woodfork, George Wallace, I'm Dave Johnson. This is the DC Sports Huddle. Break. Break.